Hello, my dear friends. How's it going? I hope I find you all in good health and safe and sound. Welcome. I'm Ari Theriger, and today's video is a response to a very recent question posed by one of my patrons concerning the symbology of keys connected to pagan women of Old Norse society. <laughs> uh, by the way, these keys right here make a cool sound, which I have added as an instrument to some of my songs <laughs> on my solo music project, which has kicked off this year, and you can check it, you can check all about it on a couple of platforms, which I will put down below at the description of this video. Listen to it uh, if you have the time, of course, obviously, or if you are at the very least curious about it, and let me know your thoughts. <laughs> now, Today's video goes in line with my previous video, if there was gender equality in the Viking Age, on the issue of gender equality in the Old Norse Viking Age society, as well as the generalization, stereotypes and cultural biases created around women and their role in history and within past cultures. On that video, at the end, I present the bibliography, of course, that has helped me in my research to make that video. And two of the books are from the author Nancy Marie Brown, who focuses on the study of Viking Age and medieval Nordic women. And this patron's question came just in the right moment, as this author has also approached this subject uh, of the idea of keys associated with the figure of the housewife in Nordic society. This is one of those recurrent cases of myths of history, fabricated quite recently in our post-industrial society, which then takes roots and is held as the indisputable truth, to the point that, and understandably in modern-day neo-paganism, the symbol of the key, or, the, or a set of keys, is indeed a very typical symbol among modern pagan women, but also among women who make historical reenactments of the Viking Age, dressing up in garments worn by women in the Old Norse society. And the set of keys is almost always included as a sort of symbol attached to the figure of the Viking woman. If you haven't watched the previous video, please, I really suggest that you do. Uh, where I have shed some light on the historical myths of the Viking woman and other stuff that certainly helps to better accompany the content of this video today. Because for the sake of all of those who have already watched the previous video, I don't want to repeat myself. Otherwise, um, uh, there would be no point in making two videos with uh, almost the exact same content, right? Anyway. As previously explained on the previous video, <laughs> women in history don't cover the same historical dimensions as men, many of which in many past and present cultures and societies, as well as within the field of social and human sciences, completely disappear. The historical focus has been much more around the masculine. After all, many of past societies not only were highly patriarchal and with an accentuated inequality between social classes and different genders, but also modern societies have continued to focus on the masculine, precisely to extol the power of the patriarchy and to further extend the same patterns that rule our societies. In the case of post-Nordic societies, is, it is the, the, the same pattern. There's little we know about women and within the Old Norse society, likewise, unfortunately. As pointed out on the previous video, there are two main sources to gather information about past women of the Old Norse and medieval Nordic societies. Those are the Icelandic and Old Norse histories, laws, sagas, poetry and myths, but as pointed out previously, those sources themselves have a variety of biases, including having been written within a patriarchal society, of course, in which the feminine is almost always, if not indeed always, portrayed through the lens of the medieval Nordic male perception, 
but also these works contain texts that were written 200 to 400 years later than the events that are being portrayed in these texts. So the women in these literary sources not only lived 400 years before anything was written um, about them, but the sources themselves usually only speak of very specific women in very prominent positions, which do not reflect, of course, the reality of the great majority of women in these societies who belong to other social and economic realities. Again, the problem of generalization spoken on the previous video. Uh, the other source, uh, of course, is through archaeology, which I've explained on the previous video that it is indeed a good source which literally digs up many aspects of the lives of peoples from the past and their cultures, which often show the reality of things that clearly doesn't go in accordance uh, with, the, with the written sources. But however, archaeology does have its own biases because it is another field within the study of social and human sciences which, one way or another, has had the tendency, like in many other fields, to drink from the fountain of the post-industrial historical myths. And these studies are, of course, conducted by human beings who, in turn, are subject to cultural and social biases as well, depending on the society one lives in and where does it pend the questions and answers to current issues on gender and social equality. Now, when it comes to the figure of the woman in the Viking Age, I'm sure many of us have heard countless times that women ruled the household that the woman's domain was the domestic environment. She managed the household and all its affairs. It may seem all good and right, you could say, for the societal standards and patterns of the time. It kind of makes sense that would be the role of women in those societies during those historical periods. But not only this is a generalization of women, it is also quite a lazy approach because there isn't the effort to truly understand the role of women within these societies. So they are reduced to both generalization and the stereotype. But it is also an historical myth. Because of this idea that women of the Viking Age were confined to the domestic environment, and that being their only role, the set of keys in turn became a symbol of these women by modern society, to be more precise, by the standards and morals of Victorian society. So we see an awful lot of Viking Age women, and by extent other women of other past cultures, with a set of keys, often at their belt, as a symbol of their power and role within the private and domestic environment. But Arif, you could say, it does make sense for women of the past to carry keys with them. After all, if they controlled the domestic affairs, they have the keys of the house. Except they didn't. Generalization is as dangerous as it is creating stereotypes, and we are in the presence of both. It creates a lot of misconceptions and reduces people to a single simplistic idea often quite disrespectful towards the multiple realities and diversities of each society. As Brown points out in her books, uh, the previously mentioned author, there are 140 Icelandic sagas, and I remind you, these are often used as the main source to know the Nordic past, taking in at face value the several biases they contain. But of all these sagas, only one, speaking of an event taking place in the late 13th century, refers to a housewife's keys. Only one saga has a little mention concerning a housewife's keys of a person who lived almost 300 years after the historical stipulated time of the end of the Viking Age. If you have read the Thrilur, uh, the poem that tells the story of the theft of Thor's hammer by the giant Thrymur, and how Thor, 
and must dress as a bride, as a woman, to reclaim it. You might remember that, that, that little detail on his belt, which is a ring of keys. Now, could the keys, after all, be a symbol of women from Nordic pagan times, reflected on the god Thor himself in this particular poem? We might never know. It may be the reflection of a pagan Norse idea, just as well as reflecting the values of the medieval Christian world in which they were written, these sources were written. Because this poem was preserved in a 16th century manuscript, of course, but given the poem itself and how it was written and its content, it was probably written around the 1400s. The poem does contain pagan themes which can be compared to other earlier sources, but it also contains quite a bit of Nordic Christian understanding of things. There's no telling if the keys in this particular poem were indeed something meaningful to the Nordic pagans of the past. Again, if we look into written sources, there's only one mention of a housewife's keys. And that's it. But what about archaeology? I mean, it does reveal concrete objects that belong to people, particularly important objects with some symbolic and religious meanings, as well as objects that were equally important in people's daily lives. However, keys have indeed been found in some women's graves, but they are not common items at all. Overall, for instance, as an example, for Norway alone, only 143 keys have been found, more than half of which were found in men's graves, actually. It is more common to find swords in people's graves of the Viking Age. For Norway, for instance, over 3,000 swords, to be more precise. So keys don't seem to have been that important, and certainly not exclusively to women. Another example, a recent research in Denmark, in the context, in the context <laughs> of the Viking Age archaeology, uh, only 9 out of 102 female graves contained keys, and none of these fit the model of the housewife. This whole thing about keys in relation to pagan women, and especially the Viking women, is a 19th century historical myth. And the previously mentioned author points out the keys reflect the values of the 19th century Victorian society, when upper-class women were confined to the home and told to concern themselves only with children, church and kitchen. This period's mentality spread into other cultures. We still have <laughs> grandparents and parents in our today's societies still very much attached to these morals and values. In Swedish and Danish history books of the late 19th century, the myth of the Viking housewife starts to pop up quite a lot. Literally, this was taught to people not only about women of the past, but of women of the present, women in general. This Victorian version of Viking, Viking Age history or Viking history and the overall history of women has been presented since then as the truth. And then, of course, within neo-paganism and other modern New Age religious approaches towards the pagan past since the 19th century, this gained a whole other approach and meaning, linking the house keys to the goddess Hecate. Hecat. Not only we are talking about different cultures in very different time periods, we are also attaching a symbol of an ancient Greek goddess to medieval women of Nordic societies but also Ekatis. Keys are a reference to one of her aspects or as underworld goddess, as she holds the keys to Hades. Hades. There's no connection between Hecatis' keys with the keys women of the Viking Age supposedly had. And for that matter, any other stereotype on women holding keys, because that's a Victorian historical myth. There's no correlation between these two realities. The housewife's keys have nothing to do with women being confined to the domestic space and, as such, linked to the magic arts and mysteries within the household. Even the very portrayal of witches doing magic within their private space is a patriarchal myth, the continuation of such myths according to 
post-industrial morals and values of the 19th century European societies. Curling keys, the symbol of a Viking woman's status, is an archaeological misinterpretation influenced by 19th century historical myths. But this isn't just a misinterpretation within the study of women of the Old Norse society. This is a dangerous misinterpretation that has spread into other realities. The generalization and stereotypes given to the feminine. This is important to say because, and this now specially addressed to women, of course, uh, particularly neo-pagan women and modern witches, it is important to understand truth about the symbology of the keys, which isn't what most might think it is. And it is, in fact, perpetuating a dangerous Victorian set of morals and values which has confined women to a generalized stereotype, re reducing and obscuring women's presence and expressions in our societies. When we accept the keys as a symbol for women, particularly as a symbol of housewives, we are accepting the 19th century stereotype and we legitimize the idea that women should stay at home. We are giving young girls and women a very specific role model, a role model of an outdated post-industrial patriarchal society. So, I very much hope this video was useful. Let me know. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, see you on the next video, and as always, ta porida. Thanks for today. Obrigado por hoje. Until we meet again, my dear friends. <laughs>